It's been a rougher year than usual for your favorite giant streamers, as there's now more competition than ever, and consumers, facing a stark saturation point, saw Netflix playing defense for the first time in a decade as Disney Plus is now close to catching up subscriber-wise, and HBO Max is in chaos due to the Warner Brothers Discovery merger. And with Disney Plus on the precipice of raising prices for their ad-free tier, timed to coincide with many customers' prepaid three-year subscription deal running out, it's time to check back in with the House of Mouse's main hub for all things things Disney, Pixar, Marvel, and Star Wars. Disney Plus was kept afloat by Baby Grogu for its first year or so, but ever since WandaVision launched in January 2021, the streamer's been a non-stop parade of Phase 4 MCU programming. From Loki to Hawkeye to Miss Marvel to the recently launched She-Hulk, those series, mixed with the intermittent Star Wars adventures like Obi-Wan Kenobi and the upcoming Andor, Pixar exclusives like Luca and Turning Red, and dozens of documentaries and original series, make Disney Plus a very focused fandom destination. So, how does it stack up against the other streamers. Let's dig into it. Disney Plus in the US, which is where this review is being conducted, has a very deliberate tone. Yes, despite slowly adding more mature content, which would find itself censored, to the point where this summer Deadpool, Deadpool 2, and Logan all arrived on the site, Disney Plus is meant to mostly feature family fare, with a tremendous amount of kids programming and an unrivaled catalog of animated movies and shorts. The name of the game, however, is still the juggernaut that is Marvel, which has dominated its endeavors on the original programming front for almost two years years. Plus, beginning with Phase 4's Shang-Chi The Legend of the Ten Rings in 2021, Disney Plus also gets Marvel's big tentpole movies 45 days after they hit theaters. Right now, the MCU, sans Spider-Man solo movies, which are distributed by Sony, and 2008's The Incredible Hulk, is ready to binge at any time, with various user columns separating the movies by hero, phase, chronology, and other amusing methods of sorting. Included in all of this, too, after the fun Marvel Studios assembled behind-the-scenes documentaries, are what are being called Marvel Legacy Movies, which are the non-MCU X-Men and Fantastic Four films. An argument could be made that the MCU shows take up too much oxygen, in the sense that they overshadow much of Disney Plus's other original offerings, like its Nat Geo docs about Jacques Cousteau or Evil Knievel, its industry-centric deep dives like Behind the Attraction and Light and Magic, or its YA content like Stargirl and Artemis foul. But those bread-and-butter Marvel shows are also steering the ship, as it were, wetting appetites for upcoming fantasy revivals like Willow and Percy Jackson, which line up tonally despite not slotting into a Marvel or Star Wars homepage. Disney has its hooks in both children and adults, so it's a service that can nicely suit a crowded household. Back at launch, fans seemed to be a bit more excited about the bountiful back catalog of classic Disney films that had now become available, as they leapt into the deep end of the pool and binged offerings from the company's golden, silver, and bronze animation ages, as well as live-action family adventures like 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, Bed Knobs and Broomsticks, and The Black Hole. The novelty of having these titles at your fingertips may have worn off over the past three years, but it doesn't take away from Disney Plus's impressive and unique well of content. Those seeking adult prestige TV and film dramas, like you'd find on premium cable, might find the streamer lacking, of course. Here in the States, aside from a few new exceptions that can be controlled and managed by parents if need be, Disney Plus has a ceiling for mature content. Annual showcase event Disney Plus Day on September 8th, along with being the streaming premiere date for Robert Zemeckis' new live-action Pinocchio, starring Tom Hanks, as well as Thor Love and Thunder, was used to announce new projects and give updates on upcoming originals, and hopefully not like last year's disastrous Twitter threading. Disney Plus's interface hasn't changed all that much since launch, still utilizing a homepage featuring a latest releases scroll menu, five main hubs for Disney, Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, and Nat Geo, and then a dozen or so themed columns below. It's clean, easy to move a cursor through, and also easy to see what you're highlighting and unchallenging to navigate, as it's understandably meant for children too. It's also very minimal, and the site's larger vault of content isn't readily accessible from these columns. Heading over to the left, the actual movie and TV sections allows for a much more expansive exploration of content, including headers for which items are available in IMAX aspect ratio, 4K resolution, and HD at no extra cost. As it stands though, Disney Plus's interface is built for those looking for the newest and brightest features, and having them within easy reach. 
Twitch. The service releases weekly episodes of shows, so it's built for those headed there to see a very specific thing. It's elegant, yet minimal. Among the rows on the homepage, you'll find recommended for you, new to Disney+, Plus, a not-too-buried continue-watching column, an originals section, and then just wildcard groupings that unfortunately breed a lot of repetition. Your craftable, curatable watch list is accessible from the left side column, and items can be added to it by clicking on the film or show's main page plus button, though some other streamers make it even easier than that. Disney Plus is available on many devices, including web browsers, game consoles, and iOS and Android phones. Given that Fox properties like Deadpool have arrived on the service, as well as the Orville, parental controls have become a bigger topic of conversation. As of right now, it doesn't seem like Disney Plus has a way to block specific movies, but it does allow the creation of a kid's profile, which filters out adult content, as well as pin protected regular profiles to prevent children from logging onto their parents' pages. You can also create a password block for the creation of new profiles. All in all, it feels there should be an easier way to manage this, but right now there are only a handful of movies to truly fret about if you want to shield the younglings. Are there other various bits and bobs people would like to see fixed or improved? Of course. These things also vary depending on how you're accessing Disney+, Plus, TV, console, mobile, etc. But the interface's messaging is somewhat clear. It focuses wholly on what's driving subscriptions and helping make Disney, as of August, the number one streamer in the entire world. That's Disney+, Plus, Hulu, and ESPN Plus combined. Disney Plus started out with a very modest monthly rate of $6.99, plus the option of a D Plus Hulu ESPN Plus bundle $12.99 per month. Things are about to change though, and this MCU factory is about to get pricey. As many streamers try to find a way to actually be profitable, which is causing a lot of the calamity with HBO Max right now, things will now take a tumble back to where this all started, cable television. Yes, we've already had many streamers realize the weekly episode model works best for their content, but now these disruptors are also cycling back toward ad-supported tiers. Netflix's ad-supported layering will come early 2023, while Disney Plus looks to kick things off on December 8th. What we're looking at is a raise to the ad-free subscription price, now called premium, at a cost of $10.99 a month. The price we currently pay for ad-free, $7.99 a month, will now be the ad-supported version. So Disney's not introducing a cheaper ad-filled tier, just raising the price of the ad-free one. Furthermore, an ad-supported bundle that includes Disney Plus and Hulu will cost $9.99, and an ad-supported bundle of Disney Plus, Hulu, and ESPN Plus will cost $12.99. The new price points haven't taken effect yet, so it's hard to say at this point if the structuring of the ads will be so disruptive as to actually lower the Disney Plus score. But for right now, the service is the most focused on what brought it to the dance than it's ever been. Fans of Marvel and Star Wars and surrounding interests are kind of trapped here, since there's almost too much content and too steady a stream of it to ignore, or intermittently cancel and renew. The interface remains clean and friendly while also being a little top-heavy and repetitive with the massive fandoms, but that's just playing into the site's core content, and lifeline, really. And though it's hard to notice based on the homepage, there is still an abundance of yesteryear gems to find in the vault.